Welcome to Always Moving Forward with Renee. I'm moving, moving forward. Hello and happy day to all. This is the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Always Moving Forward with Renee and Friends. We are glad you invited us into your homes. And I trust, as well as my friends, that you had a great, great week. It is truly, truly a blessing to be with you again. I am Renee and my friends and co-host is Lenore. Wait, Lenore. <laughs> Then we have Jackie and Noni on this end. Hello. For those of you who called, text, and emailed requesting that we talk about a subject, and the subject being domestic violence, because I've received calls starting from the first of the year, people wanted to hear about domestic violence. Well, today is your day. Our guests stepped up when they found out we were looking for someone to tell their story. Yes. Let me introduce our guest today. To my right is Elfrida Robinson. She has been diagnosed as legally blind with muscular degeneration. Did I say that right? Macular. Oh, macular. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> but she got us straight. She's been divorced for 16 years, has two biological children, and two adopted children, and one grandchild. In 1982, she received her associate's degree from Wayne County Community College in liberal arts. In 1985, a bachelor's degree from Detroit College of Business. From 1993 to 2003, she's been in counseling, psychoanalysis. 93 to present, she is a recovering person for 24 years, and she'll tell you about that. 2005, Elfrida retired with her disability. 2009, she launched Bridge the Gap Incorporated, a career development service, which is a nonprofit that specializes in providing career development services to the disabled. 2011, you know this lady, I can go on and on. 2011, Elfrida graduated from the University of Detroit Mercy College with a Master's of Business Administration. Her relig religious affiliations, non-denominationals, seven years member of none other than Triumph Church. And to my left here, we have Delon McCoy, who is a hairstylist. And she's been a hairstylist for over 20 years. And she currently works at ABA Salon in Southfield. Delon, you may remember, I talked about the young lady who is my stylist. Well, here she is. <laughs> here is Delon. Thank you. And next to her, we have her daughter. Wave at him. And your daughter's name again? Portia. Portia. We have Portia. The sh and the show, let me just say, we've been searching for some time for someone who would tell their story. But we weren't having any luck. One day after church, I was talking with a member, asking if she knew of someone who would step up. She didn't know anybody, but lo and behold, Elfrida, she overheard me and she stepped right up and said she wanted people to know her story. And at one of my appointments at the salon with Delon, I shared with her 
that I found someone to be on the show to tell their story. Delon said, what story? I told her that when I found out that this person had a story to tell on domestic violence, Delon said, well, I'd like to share mine. So little did I know I've been out there searching, searching, searching. But where were they? Right here at my church. Then right here at the salon I go to. So you know, people, we need to open our mouths because we don't know who is in our backyard. But before we start, I must give a shout out to our sponsor, Speed Flow Investment Club, where you can invest a small amount, a very small amount, am I right, Jackie? Yes. Which it can grow into what we call forever income. You can call them at 248-721-1256. Tell them you heard it on Always Moving Forward. Also, I can't do the show without mentioning Antoine Bell, the CEO of Bell Network. He makes it possible for us to be with each and every one of you every week, every Sunday. Again, our topic today is domestic violence, which can be defined as a pattern of behavior in any relationship that is used to gain power and control over an intimate partner. Okay, did you hear what I said? Oh, yes. It's a pattern something that they do over and over and over again, okay, to gain control. But tell me, Delon, yes. how did your story begin? Hi, my name is Delon McCoy, and yes, I was a part of domestic violence in my life at a very young age, and I am here to help possibly anybody who is hearing, who wants to hear or wants to be helped. I was a young mother and I had a boyfriend that probably had money, which was power, and he had a lot of control over people as well as me at the time. Um, and so after so many years, it, came to light that he was abusive by, uh, if I didn't do what he said or, you know, um, he would, first it started out as, um, what would you say, um, arguments, mm -hmm. things like that. And then it started out as maybe one hit, you know, and then it started out to be in a real abusive situation where I was beat maybe two black eyes at a time and almost put in the hospital. So um, many times he would apologize and say, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. you know, and then, you know, bring me gifts after that. To make up. Yeah, mm -hmm. to make up for it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then I would go back because I'm young. I don't really understand. You know, I thought, oh, well, maybe he's just going through something at right. the time. You know, and so uh, just kept going back. And that's how it started, mm. pretty much. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, you know, seems like it starts that way. You know, being young, because uh, statistics does say it happens between the age of what twenty-two. It starts mm. that young. Earlier than that. Yeah. Earlier than it that? Starts in high school. Okay, it starts in high school, but I'm just talking about statistics. statistics. You know, because it can start early, and as retired administrators, we see that, you know, with our high school students, mm -hmm. but what's reported, they don't report it. Very right. seldom. So statistics say at 22. Okay? Well, most women don't talk about it right. because they're afraid, yeah. you know. 
and they're afraid they could lose. Um, some women are with men for financial gain or financial reasons. Mm -hmm. They probably can't take care of themselves or their children. So they stay with the man for that reason. Okay. And so, you know, that's why they don't talk about it because they don't want to mess up what they have at right. that time. Right. And that was kind of my situation at the time. Okay. Okay. Well, I have a question for you. Well, with what happened, how did it change your life? Well, it did change my life. Well, he wound up going to prison for a very long time, which, you know, I was praying to get out of that situation as well. And I believe that God was on my side with that as well. And um, when he got locked up, I learned to be my own person again. Hope shot. And, you know, go what to did school. You say? It was a hope shot. Okay. Yeah. And um, I just learned to start taking care of me and my children all over again. So, right, by myself. Right. Yeah. Okay. Elfrida, tell us how did your story begin? Well, mine came from my daughter's, um, my oldest daughter's father. Um, I couldn't deal with rejection. He didn't want me anymore. Um, he uh, really wanted an older woman that had a lot of stuff. And at that time, I was in school. I had two jobs um, and going to college. And I didn't have the things that he needed. And so he rejected me, and I became very violent. Um, and I went over our house and bust out the windows and tried to stab him with a, a butcher knife because I couldn't deal with rejection. Mm -hmm. and, I, um, and I remember if he had not responded as quick as he did, I would have had him. But he jumped off the porch, and we began to fight in the middle of the street. Um, I come from a family that believed that if you hit me, I hit you back. Uh, mm -hmm. My grandfather believed that um, one fight, all fight. And so I come from another <laughs> yes, place. You know, yeah. I come from a place that, uh, mm -hmm. let's do this. You yeah. know? Yeah. We, if you put, you put your hands on me, now you, we gonna do it. Yeah, and I, um, so I became, I was the person that uh, um, presented the violence because I couldn't deal with my emotions. You know, my emotions was really uh, a rejection. You don't want me. Oh, no, I just couldn't, I couldn't see myself not being wanted, mm -hmm. you know, or appreciated or um, loved. Or, you know, you know what I'm doing for you? You know what I'm giving you? You know, yeah. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So mine began as a direct result of rejection. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have someone that was young and impressed you know, and and then rejection, mm -hmm. rejection. But you know, some of the warning signs. Uh, you know, when someone, you know, like you said, the black guys, when they start pushing, mm -hmm. pushing on you. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, jealousy. You know, mm -hmm. like Elfrida said, she couldn't stand that rejection. That's jealous coming in there. Yeah. A controlling behavior yeah. is what you talked about. So, uh, and, and some of them are, you know, where they isolate you right. and they cut you off right. from everybody, mm -hmm. just want you there with them, mm -hmm. you know, their way or no way, okay? Uh, Delon, yes. um, in your case, uh, was it mental as well as physical? Was it ment any mental abuse? Yes, I would say so. Or? Yes, um, yes, when he wanted to do the things that he wanted to do, um, he would say I wasn't, maybe I wasn't worthy of certain things for him to go out and do what he wanted to do. Uh, and mentally, what, yeah, that was the mental part. Physical, yes, if I didn't do what he asked me to do, he would physically put his hands on me. Um, I mean, like I say, it, we have, he has really hurt me to the point of where I had to go to the hospital. That's just what I say. Yeah. And you will always have that one person you can talk to that can help you. And you should always have that one person who you can call to come and help you. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
When they mentioned about um, control, I can remember um, I was told not to go out. You know, we had broke up and I was told I couldn't go out, you know, and this particular night I decided I was going out, you know, I'm going out. Mm -hmm. And he jumped over the banister and hit me in my eye. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, and I became very, very violent, but by daylight I was in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. You know, I was always going back because mm -hmm. um, I, I just felt like I, I couldn't, he loved me, you know, even though he hit me, he loved me, mm -hmm. you know, and I was delusional. I, I gotta call it what it was. I, mean, it was delusional. I was delusional, you know. Um, even though he had another woman, you know, I still felt that he loved me. You know, why would he hit me if he didn't love me? You know, um, and so that was the basic of, of our relationship the constant fighting, going back together, fighting, going back together. Um, and then when I got pregnant, I was, I remember when he jumped on me when I was pregnant with my daughter. It's all right. Okay. And I ended up inside the hospital. It's over now. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yes, yes. And I remember when I woke up and I started screaming because uh, my uncles and aunts and family was there. And uh, I said, he jumped on me. He jumped on me. And I could hear the commotion of him trying to get away from him. And I, uh, that gave me enough courage to, 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 to get out of it because if he would jump on me when I'm pregnant, with his child, mm -hmm. you know, uh, that's who he was. It had nothing to do with me. That's his character, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and I had to really, really uh, get with that, you know, that he, it, wasn't, it wasn't so much about him loving me, he loved himself and he wanted me to be in control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, but uh, you know, hey man, you, you got away. Yeah. Can I ask you a question now, Freedom? Yes. Did you love him? It's yes. clear that you did, sure. but mm -hmm. I just want to hear you say it. Yes, that. I did. You did love it. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. and you know, Mayo Angelo says, when a person shows you who they are, believe them. So that's a good thing for a lot of ladies to remember. If someone shows you violence or something like that, believe them. Try to get out. You, you know, and, and that's so easy to say, audience. Mm -hmm. you, you understand what I'm saying? But it's so hard because you, you said you loved him. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you were back there. You were back. But like Delon said, you know, we all need someone to talk to. Yes. Yes. You know, that one person, someone that would listen to us. And that's what we can do if we see something. You know, let's listen to people, offer some type of support, provide some resources. You know, give them a, an escape plan. Yes. You know, yes. something. Yes. yes. I, I have a question for both of them. Were y'all in your early 20s or teens? Or what was the age? I was 19. I was in my teens right mm -hmm. before 20. Yeah. And. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, no. I just wanted to mention it was a girl came in my hair salon and she had hair. It was, I thought it was gel in her hair. And as I got to shampooing her hair, it was actually blood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and then as I got to her scalp, she had a, you know, cut in her scalp. So I'm wondering, like, you know, what is this? And, you know, she first she said it was gel. So I'm thinking, oh, my God. So, you know, I just rinsed her hair out. And she told me that she got hit in the head by her boyfriend. So I tried to tell her, I said, you don't have to be in this relationship, you know. Mm -hmm. I said, if you need help, let me know. I could try to get somebody to help you. Yeah. And she would not let me help her. She was just, she felt stuck in that relationship. But, yeah. I and you know, not to cut you off, but a lot of people do feel stuck. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. they can't go anywhere. You're in this house, apartment, this dwelling with them. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, and, and your belongings are there. He's paying the rent. And, and you just feel like, well, what am I going to do? Where am I going? I worked two jobs, went to college. I had my own, but I was looking for daddy. Mm -hmm. So 
to you, when you're looking for somebody to love you, to appreciate you, you know, that you possibly can build this this relationship with and be a family. See, I always wanted a family. You know, I always wanted that family figure and and he he represented that. You know, he represented mm. that. And so I was willing to, 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 you know, to work it out. Maybe he just going through a phase. You know, his brother had got murdered. Maybe he just going through yeah. a phase. It's going to get better. I was excuses. always making excuses. Yeah, make excuses. Making right. excuses for his behavior. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and in the long run, it, I couldn't make any more excuses. You know, because it was evident that he didn't care about me. You know, um, but it took me a long time to get there. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not that I, I wanted that. It wasn't that my, I didn't, I wouldn't, you would have never told me I had low self esteem. Mm -hmm. you, you couldn't have never told me that. My, my, everything about me showed that I had some get up and go about myself, and that I was a go getter, yeah. and that I, I, was, I was willing to go to school and have nice things. But a lot of times things are internal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you know. Oh, if he put his hands on you, mm -hmm. why did you think that he loved you? I come from a very fighting family, right? <laughs> I mean, for real. It was 14 strong going over there on um, Mackinac and Mary <laughs> right? And they fought each other, but that didn't mean they didn't love each other. You know, um, I seen my grandmother and grandfather argue. That was not, I didn't never see him hit her, but you know, I seen things that people didn't walk away. You know, you know, you stay, you know, you don't, you work it out. You, you come to some place where, you know, it's going to get better. We're going to do the right thing. Um, I was going through something. You, I was making excuses, thinking that it was going to get better. And it would for a minute. Mm -hmm. You know, I would get what they call guilt gifts. Mm -hmm. Guilt gifts. Diamonds first, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. oh, and then yeah. I'll be like, oh, yeah. It's good now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it'll be all right, you know, stuff like that. It's all now. It's all now, right? And, but really, um, it was only a matter of time before the behavior um, came back. Right, right. It's worse, right? right. Yes, absolutely. Well, well, Portia, you want to add something to this? Well, what I'll say is I've seen my mother go through, I was very young at the time, but I seen it and growing up, I kind of, um, I don't know, as I got older and I got into a relationship, I kind of went through the same thing. And I decided to break that like generational curse. Yes, yes. And so that's what it took for me to my first experience with domestic violence. I was um, choked till I was unconscious. And I didn't even realize it, like I thought it was you know, just the normal thing. Like, I remember calling my mom the next day, and she's like, what, you know? But to me, I'm like, well, you know, he was just mad. Like, mm -hmm. you know, he's going through some things. Yes. I kind of um, made excuses. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then the second time, um, it was been little times here and there, but the second time what made me walk away is um, I got beat. Like, I had to wake up the next day, and I was, brown and blue, mm. my whole body. And that's what kind of just, mm. what I had to look in the mirror at myself. Yes. And that's what made me just realize like I had to go. And I was my yes. daughter's father and that was the last time I was in a relationship with him. Like it really just took for me to look in the mirror and see myself. Mm -hmm. Just cause like she said, I'm a go-getter. I'm not, you know, I'm a yes. good woman. Like right, we, right. sometimes we just feel like we have to or we just think love is just like love. But I learned that love is an emotion. Love can get you in trouble. It can get you in bad situations. <laughs> so it just took for me to, you know, just see my mother go through it for me to just really want to break that, that curse. Okay, wow. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, there's a special date coming up next month, Saturday, August the 25th, the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History. The Women's Committee is sponsoring Roberta Hughes Wright Golf Classic, and it's going to be held at Glen Oaks Golf Course. That address is 30500 West 13 Mile Road in Farmington Hills, Michigan. They're also going to have a silent auction. So you can contact Patricia 
Trotter at Trotter. Her uh, email is Trotter Patricia at att dot net, or you can call her at three one three five five zero five two six eight. Let me repeat that phone number again for Patricia. It's 313-550-5268. But I want to say today that I think we started something, ladies. Yes. We've started something. Audience, if you're experiencing anything, you need to get some help. You don't have to accept it whether you're a female or male because there are some males yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. you know that yeah. is experiencing abuse physical and verbal. You right. don't have to accept it. So I want you to stay tuned because we are going to have a part two on this. But if anyone wants to let us know that you liked our show today please call or text us at 313-657-5556 or email us at gwealths111 at gmail.com. So I also want to tell you, remember, God loves you and so do we. Love yourself. See you next week. Enjoy Always Moving Forward with Renee. Moving, moving Everybody, this is your girl Vicky Winans, and you're watching Bell Global Network. My name is Mike Duggan, and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy D. Hattie watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. Hi, I'm Charlie Langton, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, everybody. I'm telling you, everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. I'm Evelyn Turrentine, AG, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Pastor D. Alexander Bullock of Preachers of Detroit, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Bishop Edgar Van of Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit, Michigan, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Bernadette Stannis. You know me best as Thelma from the TV show Good Times. And you are watching Bell Global Network.